So now we're going to look at a lot more of our shape commands uh, and we're going to be going through quite a lot here so it's a lot to take in uh, and you really need to go into the software and play around with these tools yourself to really work them out. So we're going to get started, we'll create a new file we'll be using the generic template creating a new part give it a name Okay. So here we are in our shape ribbon tab with our shape ribbon panel and here are all of our commands. Now we've already looked at a few of these, for example the insert sketch, our quick shapes here, the extrude, revolve, sweep. We've briefly touched on the fillet. We understand the combine command and our basic editing commands. Okay, so now we're going to go through the rest of these. We'll leave out the morph commands for now. They're a little bit more complicated. So we're going to start off by taking a look at our swept rod and spiral sweep. Okay, the variable sweep, that's not something we really need to get into. So we'll start off taking a look at the swept rod. Okay, this is a relatively simple command, but it has some useful applications. So let's start off by bringing in two point line in 3D space middle click, I'm going to bring in two of them, so middle click again we're going to place the second line okay, the end point is snapping in to the center to the midpoint of my first line okay this is a critical snap point so left click, place the second point Confirm. Then I'm going to bring in a three point curve. And I'm going to make it a little bit more three dimensional. I'm going to have a middle point on my second two point line. Okay, confirm. I'm going to middle click the operation. Okay, now let's use our swept rod. Okay, so the swept rod is going to place a rod on a curve. It's going to sweep, effectively sweep a circle along our curve. Okay, so it'd be the same as placing a circle sketch at the end here and sweeping it using the sweep command along our curve. But the swept rod command will do it automatically for us by picking our curve. We're then able to select the diameter of the rod two millimeters seems good enough for me and we'll take a look at the rest of these fields in just a moment so let's confirm the operation and see how it works there you go we have a swept rod on that curve okay so let's redefine last by right clicking redefine last and we can pick multiple curves at once okay and that brings into contention these fields that join rods together this is going to fuse our rods together at the points at which they meet it's going to add them okay we can also add a fillet so we'll add a fillet to any of our harsh corners okay a fillet in this fillet here so all of our sharp corners will have a fillet added to them keep curves you know what this is this is, this is to keep our original curves here Okay, the interior, this is going to give an interior diameter to our rod, so it's going to give it a hole through the center. Let's see how this one plays out first. Okay, and you can see how our rods join together and how we can have sharp corners like this. Let's add an interior diameter, say one millimeter. Okay, and you can see the effect here. Okay, so this is our swept rod command. Let's undo this. Now we're going to check out our spiral sweep. Okay, this is a sweep, but instead of sweeping our shape along a direction, 
it's going to spiral sweep it around an axis. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. I'm going to insert a sketch. Totally, I can use my insert sketch command. Okay, select a plane, front plane. Use centroid defined by plane. Confirm. Let's bring in a simple circle. Okay, and now we're going to use our spiral sweep. Okay, we have a few options available here. We're going to keep it simple and just look at our top few fields. We are first prompted to pick our profile. So our profile can be any one of these: sketch, curves, curve list, parting line. Okay, so let's select our sketch. We are then prompted to pick an axis for our spiral sweep to sweep around. So in this case, let's choose the x-axis. Okay, you can see our preview come up. We're getting our sketch swept around. It's like a revolve, except we're progressing a distance in the x direction to get a spiral. We can increase the distance of our spiral turn. Okay, and we can also increase the number of turns within this distance. Let's confirm our operation to check it out. Okay, here you go, we've got a nice spiral sweep of that circular sketch. You may find some applications for this. We don't have to sweep a circle. We can sweep any kind of sketch. So let's redefine the last operation. At the bottom here, we can revolve our sketch clockwise. Change the direction. We can keep our sketch profile. Okay, I'm not going to cover these fields right now. Okay, we can add a taper to our spiral sweep. Okay, it's not liking the taper beyond that. Like so. Okay, so this is our spiral sweep command. Let's undo this. And now we're going to take a look at our lofting commands. Okay, we have several available. The loft, drive curve loft, and a by rail loft. So let's start off by looking at our loft command. And again, this is one that has many applications and we can use quite often. So we're going to start off by inserting a rectangle. I'm going to use my quick shape, the rectangle. Okay. And I'm going to use the height width method. So I'll select my plane as the XY plane, top plane. You can define it as the center. let my entity filter snap to the origin and let's make it a 10 by 10 here I can add an angle rotate a rectangle here okay, and I'm going to confirm the operation and now I'm going to copy my rectangle so select the copy command okay, I'm in the wireframe tab we have the copy command here, the basic editing commands. We have the same basic editing commands here as in the shape ribbon tab. Okay, I'm going to perform a quick pick on my curves. I'm going to do a quick chain pick by holding down the shift key on the keyboard and left clicking on one of my curves. Okay, it's going to pick them all. And now I'm going to move up, copy my rectangle. Let's give it a whole number, 8 millimeters. enter, and I'll confirm the operation. Okay, so we have a copy. Now I'm going to move the copied rectangle. Let's do a quick chain pick again, holding down shift. I'm going to rotate it slightly. Let's say negative 15, enter, 
firm okay, we have our two rectangles here I'm now going to use the loft command I'm going to loft a curve to another curve left click on loft ok in our loft type we're going to stick with profiles here our profile again we have the ability to pick a sketch, curve, edge, curve list, bottom line so we're going to start off by lofting between two curves these two curves ok now picking at the same end of each curve left clicking to pick them, we see they're both picked in our profiles field and we can see a preview we're getting a face, a surface lofted between these two curves so if we confirm the operation we can see a face, ok, we've created a face from, these, from lofting these two curves ok, so we can do this again we can loft this curve down to this curve ok and we're going to add them, we're going to boolean add our new face to the previous face it's going to add them together to create a shape confirm and here we have our second lofted surface, now we, we'll use the loft again, middle click ok and this time I'm going to loft an edge to a curve. Now when I loft an edge, it is an edge to a surface so you can see we have a tangency condition thrown in at that edge, ok, it's reading the tangency of the face and it's continuing it for our new lofted face. Again, okay, oftentimes we'll want this feature to, to create a nice smooth transition Okay, in this case I'm just creating a shape here, a closed shape so I'm going to want to change my continuity to none but look we can play around with our continuity here give it the curvature ok so let's change it to none and we have no tangency there no continuity ok we're going to add this again Ok, and you can see that we're one by one building ourselves a shape by just lofting curves and edges. Ok, and we can loft multiple curves at once or multiple edges at once. So let's loft this curve to this one. Let me quickly show you what happens if I don't pick the same side for our curves. Ok, you can see we get a flip and that's no good. So we need to pick the same sides and now I'm going to pick at the same time this edge so you see we're continuing our loft from three profiles in this case I'm going to unpick the last ok, and then I'm going to loft the flat surfaces let's loft our final sides ok so before we add our last loft, our last surface to this shape I want to point out to you what we have going on here we can see that our shape has pink outside, has a pink outside, yellow inside ok, now you may remember me telling you that the pink is the inside of the face and the yellow denotes the outside of the face ok so really this shape is inside out ok and this shape is what we call an open shape it has an open surface in it ok it is, it is not watertight so if we set our entity filter onto shape if we right click on the shape navigate down to entity info ok we have a lot of information here I'm just interested in this top piece the shape says it is open ok so we can use this to check whether a shape is open or closed so when we close up this shape by adding the last surface on by doing this loft edge to edge 
no continuity. Now if this does close up our shape, the software will automatically see this and it will reverse our face directions and our shape should be turning yellow. So let's confirm the operation and see. Okay, it does. When this happens it means that we have closed our shape. So if we check out our entity info again, right clicking on the shape, entity info, okay, we can now see that the shape is closed. And this is what we want to see. A closed shape is what we can use for manufacture. Okay, we cannot 3D print, cannot cast open shapes. It's not possible. We can't print faces. We have to print a complete watertight shape, a closed shape. Okay. Now the loft tool is really quite dynamic and we can do a lot with it. You don't have to loft simple lines. So let's erase this face. Let's throw in another two point line up here. Okay, and let's loft to it. Okay, we'll loft from this edge to this curve. Okay, you see we can loft in this manner. We can create interesting surfaces with this loft. Okay, so let's continue and close up our shape. Now I'm using no continuity here but you know we will there will be times when we want the continuity. We want tangency because we want a nice flow. Okay, you can see here that we have a flow from this edge to this edge. Okay, so there we go, we have a closed shape. Okay, and it can get more complex than this. We don't have to loft edges, we can loft curve lists, we can loft sketches. Okay, so let me show you quickly. We're going to loft a curve list. So let's first create the curve list. Right click, insert curve list. I'm going to use my chain pick, my quick chain pick by holding down the shift key. Set my entity filter to curve. Holding down the shift key, left clicking on the curve. Confirm. There's our curve list. We can also insert a curve list from within our loft. Right click, insert curve list, holding down the shift key, left click, we've inserted a curve list. Okay, now we can loft curve list to curve list, like so. And remember we need to pick the same points, otherwise we get crossovers, intersections that we don't want. Okay, we can put end caps or no end caps on this lofted surface to create a shape. Okay, so it's that easy. Okay, so I'm going to drag my model stop up to before I created the rectangle. I'm going to terminate the rest of history. Now let's try our drive curve loft. Okay, the drive curve loft is similar to our sweep. Okay, our sweep we pick one profile and one path to sweep the profile along. With the drive curve loft, we pick a curve, which is our path, and then we can pick multiple profiles to sweep along that curve. Okay, so let's give it a go. I'm going to insert a sketch on my top datum. I'm going to create a three point curve. Now I'm going to place datums at the endpoints of this curve. Okay, it's a curve within a sketch. Okay, so we cannot pick it as a curve using our entity filter. However, in many of our commands will allow us to pick curves within sketches. Okay, so we can pick this as a curve when we're using our command. So let's throw in the datums. We're going to let them snap to the endpoints of this curve in this sketch. I'm just hovering it close to the endpoint, snaps in, left click, 
get a zero offset. Let's hide the rectangle. We have an XY datum. Let's create another one. And we're going to let it snap to this endpoint. Snapping in, left click, zero offset. Let's hide our rectangle. Now we want to have the same orientation of this datum as we do this one. Okay, so in this case, the x axis is normal to the curve here. Okay, so it's we want this x-axis on this datum to be normal to the curve here. So this means we're going to have to rotate our datum about its z-axis. Okay, let's see what happens when we do it. We're rotating it 180 degrees, a whole half turn. Okay, so now we have the same orientation. Okay, we do this so that we only go into our sketching environment. We are creating our sketches with the same orientation in mind. Okay, so let's insert a sketch, right click, insert sketch on this datum, middle click, let's hide our 3D environment. I'm going to use a ready sketch. Let's pick a pentagon, throw it in, confirm. Let's give it a diameter of, let's say, five millimeters. Okay, we'll exit the sketch environment. And now let's insert a sketch on this datum. Right click, insert sketch, this datum, confirm. Into hide. 3D part environment. Let's place another pentagon. Confirm. Okay, let's give this diameter of two millimeters. Okay. Now let's use our drive curve loft. Okay, if we were going to use our sweep, we could sweep our sketch along this path. Okay, you see we we're able to pick curve within the sketch. Okay, we would get sweep along this path. With the drive curve loft, we can pick our path, but then we are able to pick more than one profile. Okay, and it's important that we pick the same points on each profile, otherwise we'll get some twists. Okay, we have many field, more fields available here, but I'm not going to overcomplicate things by getting into this. Okay, and there you go, we have our drive curve loft. Okay, we've got a pretty troublesome area here. We have a self intersecting surface. Okay, because our corner is a bit too abrupt here. This is not something that we would want with our design. We would need to sort this out. And there's various ways to do that. One of the ways being using a bi-rail loft. Okay? This is similar to our drive curve loft, except we'll be picking two paths instead of one. We pick an outside path to loft our profiles along. Okay, and we usually have a bit more control over corners in this way. And we can avoid these kinds of nasty self-intersections. Okay, but I'm not going to cover this right now, but by all means, try it out for yourself. Okay, so let's undo all of this. Okay, and we are now going to look at our fillet, chamfer, and draft commands. Okay, so let's create a few quick shapes that we can play around with. A block. And a cylinder. Okay, and let's copy these shapes in the y direction. We'll make a few copies of these. Okay, so first off, we're going to take a look at our fillet. In our options panel, we have four different fillet types available. Okay, we have many more fields as well. 
going to keep these hidden, we're not going to check these ones out just yet. Let's start off with our edge fillet, we've already encountered it when we filleted the cylinder, like so. Okay. okay but we have a few more options available this time that we'll look at. If we fillet this edge, we can create a variable fillet. This is where we have different fillet radiuses at different points. So we have to add these points in. So we left click on add, select a point on our filleted edge. Let's keep this radius at 2.65. Okay, let me pick another point. You can pick more than one point. Okay, I'm going to change the radius. Let's decrease it. Confirm, confirm. Okay. And then we're back into our original options panel. Okay, and there you see our variable fillet. Incidentally, you'll see this F icon in the upper right hand corner of our options panel in the input manager. This F icon is going to change our preview or echo as we may call it. Okay, so currently we're seeing a full echo. We left click, this is the partial echo. Left click again for no echo left click once again to bring back our full echo okay so that's what this one does also within our fillet command I'm going to point out this arc type if we change this to conic we have the ability to have a bit more control over our fillet and we can create some nice shapes by changing our conic ratio here okay so if we middle click to bring up our last command I'll now show you our elliptical fillet. Now there's an important thing to be aware of when we are doing an elliptical fillet and that is that we pick not only an edge by left clicking but we then need to pick a face that we want to keep constant. Okay, and the face we pick will have an effect on our fillet. So let's left click again to pick the top face. Okay, let me change my view slightly. You can then choose a setback and then we choose an angle. Okay, so you can see the face we picked is staying constant. Okay, and we also have the ability to change our conic ratio. Okay, instead of choosing an angle, we can choose a second setback. Okay, so this will give us the same results, it's just a different defining method. So remember, when we pick an edge, we also have to pick a face. Next up we have the loop fillet. The loop fillet, kind of similar to the chain fillet in the sketching environment. Instead of picking edges, we're picking an entire face or surface and then we're going to give a fillet to all of its edges, like so. Okay, so this field is different methods of defining our loop. And we can then set the radius, conic ratio, like before. Okay. So there we go, that's quite a nice tool as well. Finally, middle click, we have our vertex fillet, our corner fillet. This is where we pick vertices, corners to fillet. Like so. Okay, so there's some nice fillet tools here. Moving on, we have our chamfer command. Okay, so chamfers work in a similar way to the fillets, except instead of inserting a curved surface or an arc, we are producing a flat planar surface. So left click, our first edge chamfer. Okay, pick an edge, pick our setback. Okay, we can chamfer multiple edges at once. If we pick one that we didn't intend to, we can right click, unpick last. We can right click, unpick all. Okay, we have access to these by coming down in this drop down. 
and pick last. Okay, and you can see it's throwing a nice mitre at the corners. Confirm the operation. Next in our chamfer options panel, we have our asymmetric chamfer. Okay, so this is similar to our elliptical fillet in that we have to pick an edge and then immediately after we pick a face. Then choose our setback. Second setback, we can use an angle defining method. Okay, so we're, we're creating an asymmetric chamfer. Finally, middle click, we have our vertex chamfer. Again, this is like the vertex corner fillet. Confirm. Okay, so there's some really nice tools here. Moving on, we're going to take a look at our draft command. We can create a draft on a shape. Okay, so let's create a draft about this face. Okay, you can see what it does here. We're creating a draft on the cylinder. This is the angle, the draft angle, which is this angle here. Okay, and the direction of the draft is by default normal to the face that we have picked. Okay, there's more options, I'm not going to overcomplicate it again. Confirm. We can also draft edges. Okay. Pick an edge, you can see we draft about that edge. Okay, so these tools that I've showed you here, you know, we'll make use of them pretty often. They're useful, you can make our designs look nice and neat. So I recommend you play around in them, get familiar with these commands. Okay, let's move on. We have a few more commands here. But these these ones we do not use so often. Okay, I'll show you the whole command quickly. We have many fields available in the whole command. Basically, what this does. I change my entity filter on tool. We use this to create a hole in a shape. Okay. Like I said, we don't often use this, but it could come in handy. Okay, so we're performing a combine remove, a remove boolean to create a hole. Okay, the rib thread command, I'm not going to cover these, rarely make use of them. The lip, similarly, I'll show you quickly though, like the asymmetric chamfer and the elliptical fillet, you have to pick an edge and then a face, and we create our offsets for our lips. Okay, so it has use, it has use. Next up we have a stop command, which is where we place a stop around a shape, okay, so we completely encase a shape with stock. Okay, so let's move on to our edit shape commands here. Let's start off with our face offset. Okay, now our face offset allows us to pick a face and then we can offset it a distance. It's going to offset that face and then it's going to reconnect our shape by extending the side faces. Okay. Here we can disable our side faces. Like so. Most of the time we want to keep our side faces. Okay, so the face offset can be nice sometimes just to add a little extension onto faces. Again you can see where we may encounter issues. 
if we extend our faces too far. So there are limitations. But there are unavoidable limitations. Okay, so we also have a volume offset. Okay, now this is going to either shrink or expand a shape if it's possible. Okay, so if our offset is a positive number, our shape is going to expand like so. Okay, we can also do a negative offset. So if we offset our shape and negative, so let's say negative one, okay, I'm going to not keep the original shape. So we are shrinking our shape there. Okay, so that's a negative offset. Negative volume offset. Now if you shrink your shape whilst keeping the original shape, okay, you might think that it's not working here. That's simply because your new shape is within your original shape. Okay, so if you can't see your shrunk shape make sure that you do not have your keep original shape confirmed okay you can also offset our volumes keeping certain faces stationary i.e. These, sta these faces will remain where they are and the expansion will take place beyond them like so okay so that's our volume offset next up we have a shell command Okay, we can shell a shape. Okay, so we pick a shape. The thickness is how much we want it to be shelled by, how thick we want our shell to be. Okay, so a negative 0.5 means that we'll have a negative 0.5 shell on the inside. We then need to pick the faces that we want to be open. For example, if we pick these top and bottom faces, confirm the command. Here we have our shell. Look, we have a shape within side our shape. We must have shrunk this shape. Let's blank that out. Okay, so there is our shell. Now, if we give it a positive number, we create a shell on the thickness here, an outside shell of 0 0.5, like so. Shell is a nice command. We can create nice channels to place our stones in. This shape. Let's keep all of these open. There you go. We have some nice shell features. Okay, so we've seen the combine tool. This allows us to combine, boolean combine, add, remove shapes. Okay, moving on, we have the trim and divide tool. Okay, we can divide our shapes, we'll trim them to surfaces or datums. So let's use this shape here. We're going to first of all divide this shape. Okay. So we pick our shape, our base, we can divide our face with a shape, face, or datum plane. Okay, so let's divide using a datum plane. Now the datum planes extend to infinity. Okay, so this datum plane is going to cut this shape here. Okay, we cap our trimmed regions. Okay, so this is putting a face on our split areas. Okay, so let's confirm the operation. You can see we have divided our shape at that plane. Blank. And there we go, we have a two part shape now. Okay, if we were to use the trim instead of the divide, pick the same shape as our base. Pick the same plane to trim to. Okay, now instead of just dividing it, we're going to trim it. We're dividing it and deleting one side of it. Okay, now we're getting an arrow. It's hard to see because we also have the green y axis arrow. 
you see the arrow is this green one this is saying which side we're going to keep okay so this side if the arrow is pointing this side we're going to keep this side we can flip the side to keep okay we can't see it's hidden by the y-axis but we'll, it means we'll be keeping this side like so and the command has erased the other side Okay, now the neat thing about the trim and divide tools is that we do not need to trim to a planar face. We can trim to shapes. We can divide shapes with other shapes. So I'm going to bring in some more quick shapes. Let's bring in a sphere. Let's bring it in on this. We're going to bring it in as a base. Okay. Now you can see I have two shapes here, and they're intersecting. Now we can use the trim, select a base, select our trimming shape confirm and now we have trimmed this cylinder to the sphere surface so let's blank out the sphere okay so in a way this is like a boolean remove except we are keeping our removing shape okay if we redefine last if we are to switch these around Okay, so we unpick, unpick the cylinder, we pick the sphere as our base, the cylinder as our trimming shape, blank out the cylinder, you can now see that we have trimmed our sphere to the cylinder surface. Undo. Okay, so now let me show you one more thing with this tool. Let's place a datum. In fact, I'm going to create a new shape. Okay, I'm going to create a block. Let's create a block here. I'm going to create another one. And I'm going to add it. Okay, so this is pretty crude, but it will suffice for our purpose. Now I'm going to insert a datum. I'm going to insert it here, and I'm going to rotate about my Y axis, like so. Confirm. Now let's say I want to trim this shape to this datum. See, we can select our side to keep, like so. Okay, so we're using our datum to trim our shape. But let's say that I just want to trim this part of the shape and not this part. Okay, if we undo, if this is what we want to achieve, we should not be using a datum to trim to. Instead, we will trim to a face. We will place a face on this datum. Okay, so let's do this by creating a rectangle with a plane on this datum. Let's put our center point here. Okay, let's confirm the operation. I'm now going to use my loft tool to loft from this curve to this curve to create a face as a base, confirm, and now I'm going to trim this shape to this planar face, again we can see our arrow here, 
and keeping this side. Okay, and then we have our trim shape. Now if I redefine last, we can uncheck this option, keep trimming shapes. This will get rid of our face that we're using to trim our shape. Okay, there you go. Okay, so that's how we can use datums and faces for our trimming needs. Okay, next up we have the simplify command. Okay, we won't often use this again, but let me show you its purpose now. For example, if we place a chamfer, an edge chamfer, we can then use our simplify to remove the selected faces. Okay, so the command is going to try and reconnect and close these faces in order to get rid of this face. Okay, so it returns our block back to how it was before. Okay. So this is the simplify command. Okay, moving on, we have a few more. We have a replace command. I'm not going to show you this. We have a resolve self intersections command. Okay, so this tool can be used to resolve self intersecting surfaces. Okay, I'm not going to show it you now. Moving on from this, we have our merge. This is our merging components command, which we saw just earlier in the first part of this lesson. Okay, under here we have a punch command. Okay, I'm not going to show you this one. However, I am going to show you the inlay. Now the inlay is quite a nice tool. Left click to bring up the inlay input manager. Here's our options panel. We're prompted to pick a face and then we choose curves to inlay on that face. So let's create some curves on a face. I'm going to insert a sketch, right click, insert sketch. I'm going to place my sketch on this planar face. Okay. Now you can see that our centroid is being placed at an arbitrary point on this planar face. If we deselect this, we can pick our origin. Okay, we can pick it anywhere on that face. Confirm the operation. We're in the sketching environment. Let's place some ready sketch text at the origin. Give ourselves some text. Okay, that's very large. Let's, let's decrease our size. Say two. Let's make that a bit larger. Okay, let's make it bold. Okay, confirm. Okay, so we have our text here. And to exit the sketching environment. Okay, and now I'm going to inlay this text on this face. So we pick our face, we pick our curves. In this case, we're picking a sketch. Okay, now we can offset. If we offset a negative number, we're going to inlay our lettering on that surface. Okay, if we choose a positive offset, we'll be creating an emboss. Our direction by default is normal to the face. I'm going to leave it that way. We have a few more options. I'm not going to cover them right now. So let's try an inlay. And there you see we have an inlay. Okay, so there's some pretty nasty areas. We have some self intersecting areas. It looks like trouble with our lettering. So we can resolve this quickly. I'm going to come into my sketch, redefine. Okay, and we can see the trouble areas here. What I'm going to do is right click, explode my sketch, my text, so that it is in the separate curves. And I'm now going to trim out these trouble areas using my power trim. Middle click. Yeah, I can just highlight and delete them. 
Okay, in this case they're connected, so power trim. Okay, so this looks a bit more tidy now. Exit back into our 3D environment. The inlay is played automatically. You can see we have a tidier area here. Okay, so let's redefine our inlay. Redefine last. History replay, yes. Let's create an emboss. 0.5. And there you go, we have an emboss. This has created a relief from that surface. Okay. Okay, so that is the inlay tool. So like I said, I'm going to leave these morphing tools for now. We've seen our basic editing tools. So that pretty much covers our whole shape ribbon. And now I recommend you go into this yourself, play around with these tools, and get used to them.